Good morning, everyone. It is so fantastic to be here with you. My name is Josh Pylan. I am the Director of Ministries here at BCF, at Ben Christian Fellowship, and uh, it is my honor to be able to serve here and to be a part of this amazing church and this amazing community. My job is to help resource and support a lot of our volunteer teams, and I am blessed and honored to be in that position. So thank you. I love coming to get to speak to you guys. I don't know where you are this morning, but if you're at a spot where you've struggled with finding friends, maybe you've struggled with finding community and with making lasting relationships, you've struggled in being surrounded by healthy, loving, caring people, this Sunday is for you. You are not here on accident, and there's an amazing opportunity today. Did you know that the very act of accepting God's salvation makes you a foreigner? Just the simple act of saying yes and accepting Jesus' gift of salvation separates you. You see, in 1 Peter 1, 1 and 2, Peter says this. He says, I am writing to God's chosen people, that's us, who are living as foreigners, legally as aliens. God the Father knew you. He chose you long ago. His Spirit has made you holy, and as a result, you have obeyed Him, and you've been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, you might not feel like a foreigner. In fact, you might think, I feel right at home. Honestly, this is the same body I've always had. I've always lived on earth, pretty much always been an American. Uh, honestly, as far as foreigners go, I've never even left Oregon. This is really kind of home for me. I don't, I, I, don't, I don't get what you mean when you say foreigner. But when you accept God's gift of salvation, a very small change happens inside. A very small piece is adjusted. And the longer that you live as a Christian, the longer that you pursue Jesus, the longer that you continue to walk out your Christian faith, the more that change becomes apparent. The more you start to look different from this world. Well, I know a thing or two about looking different and feeling separate and maybe even feeling a little alienated. I have a secret I'm going to share with you today. I was homeschooled. <laughs> so these are my people. When I... When I finally told my wife, I, I, I confessed to her, I said, baby, I was homeschooled for the first nine years. She treated it like a birth defect. She said, oh, baby, it doesn't show. You, you can't see it. You can't even see it. Being homeschooled is like having one eyebrow shaved off. Something is wrong. We're just not sure what. Being a Christian can sometimes feel like that, can't it? You can feel like you're a little bit disconnected, like maybe you're missing a beat or something's off or you react differently, you look differently, maybe you talk a little differently. And the longer you're a Christian, the more that becomes apparent. When you make that change, you become a citizen of heaven. When you accept God's salvation, your citizenship changes. And that sounds like something we could post on Instagram. It sounds like a, a great poster, doesn't it? It's something that we could see, but maybe not know. Something we could read, but maybe not have locked in. And today, I want to talk about what that means, because it's not just a Christianese word. It's not a church word. Your citizenship changes when you accept Christ's gift. Amen. You become part of a nation of God's people, living as foreigners here on earth, literally an alien nation. In uh, John Chapter 1, verse 12, he says, But all who did receive him, that's Jesus, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Your citizenship in heaven comes with rights. You have rights that are due to you as a citizen of heaven. These are things that God gives to us, that he grants to us. He allows us to walk in them. And today, as we look at our citizenship, I want to talk about a few of those rights. Because whether you know it or not, you are a foreigner. When I was 14, I came to a stunning realization. Here at Ben Christian Fellowship, I work in youth ministry, and not a lot of 14-year-olds have stunning realizations. It's a bit of an anomaly. And so as I looked back on my life and I realized that this one hit me so heavily at 14, I started to realize when I was 14 that I needed 
community. You see, I had spheres of community. I had my family, and I had a tight group of friends, and I even had teachers and classmates, and there were different spheres, but I realized that there was a gap in my community. I wanted to grow my community, and so in an effort to grow my community, I committed myself to a very simple idea. I was never going to walk into a room and not know somebody. To accomplish that, I had to introduce myself to everyone. It's a simple task, meet everyone on earth, okay? (laughs) It's not difficult, there's about eight billion, we got this, okay? Give me some time, I can do this. I was homeschooled for the first nine years, then I went for two years at Morningstar Christian School, just down the road, and then for the last two years, I went to Ben Senior High School. At Morningstar, my class was about 16 people. At Ben Senior High School, it was almost 1,800 kids in my class alone. It's a lot of people to meet. But I set myself to the task. One day, I was walking into class, and there was a very uh, acute girl who I was walking with. Now, she was smart. She was very uh, uh, astute. She was a great student. She would go on later to become a dignitary or an ambassador or a doctor, something along those lines. She was, if Disney was going to make a movie about my life, she would have been played by a poodle. Okay? (laughs) Just want you to hold that image to protect the innocent. The poodle and I were walking into class one day, and we came across a set of locked doors. Now, I was totally okay with this because we could just walk further around. I don't know if you know much about poodle people, but poodle people are not late for class ever. She is having a full-on meltdown. She's freaking out. As I walked up to the doors, though, I saw someone on the inside who was the polar opposite of the poodle. In my effort to get to know absolutely everyone on earth, I had come to meet this girl on the inside of the doors. She was a goth person. I don't know if you know what that means, but head to toe, she wore black. She had piercings all over her face. There were pins and crazy things and metal in places that I didn't expect. And she had dyed her hair, many different colors. And it was, she was kind of an intense person visually. And as we walked up to the doors, the poodle and I realized they were locked and the poodle couldn't get in and she couldn't get to class. She started to freak out. Well, I just looked inside the window and I said, hey, Alyssa, could you help? Could you unlock this door for me? And Alyssa came, opened the door and she said, hi, Josh. It's very good to see you. I said, well, hey, Alyssa, thank you so much for opening the door. And as I look back, the poodle is standing there aghast. She couldn't fathom why I would know someone like that. The thought had never occurred to her that it's possible to meet people outside of her poodle sphere. (laughs) It was at this moment I realized a very important lesson in life. If you commit to growing your community, doors will open for you. (laughs) Tell you what. Some people have already had this realization. They know they need community. They've got it, right? It's already been locked into their brains. Some people, though, have the opposite idea locked in, the idea that they're lone wolves and that they don't need community. And maybe you're in that spot today where you're saying, you know what? I'm good. I'm self-sufficient. I've got this. I can do it on my own. But I want to tell you that that is a really dangerous idea. The devil is real. He's not an idea. He's not a, a, a bad illustration. He's, not a, uh, he's an actual, real identity. And the real identity, he's not rooting for you. In fact, he knows that you're living as a foreigner. And he wants you to believe that you're behind enemy lines and that support isn't coming. He wants you to believe that you've been left out, that you're out in the cold, that no one is there to encourage you, no one is there to support you, that no one is coming for you, and no one ever will come for you. And some of you may have believed the lie that that's okay. But I want to tell you today, it's a lie. You were not created to be alone. God never intended for you to live alone. In fact, when God paints the picture, if we were going to draw out his alien nation living as foreigners here on earth, it doesn't look like the Philippines. It's not a series of spread out, isolated islands. 
When God designed his nation, if he was going to draw it out on a map, we are one cohesive group, all of Christ's believers all over the world living as one community. 1 Corinthians 12, 27, Paul said it this way. He said, all of you together are Christ's body, and each of you is a part of it. Now, that verse doesn't have an asterisk at the end of it that says, except for you, 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 him, that guy, and those two. It has all of us together, our Christ body, and each of you is a part of it. Nobody is a lone wolf. Yes, God's plan for you is to be connected in a joy-filled and miraculous community. Amen. Because you can find community in a lot of places. You know, we got bowling leagues, there's a rotary club, we've got a, a Facebook, you've got internet, you've got a Outdoors groups, maybe you've got a Thursday night barbecue, maybe you guys get together and do like a potluck, and you might say to yourself, I know I need community, I've got it. But Christian community is different. And there are things that you can only find in Christian community that you're not going to find in a bowling league, and you're not going to find in a Thursday night dinner club, you're not going to find it out and about in the kayaking group. And that is a joy-filled and miraculous community. What separates Christian community from your standard club or group or gathering is that we're not formed around a common interest. We're not all here to barbecue. We're not all here to kayak. We're not all here to go golfing. We are actually formed around a common relationship to our Creator God through Christ Jesus. In John 13, 34, and 35, he says, A new command I give to you, Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, literally my nation of people, if you love one another. When Christ laid out his entire nation, he said the defining trait, the thing they will be known most for is love, not puppy love. We're not a hippie commune. It's not weird, I promise. Let's not make it weird. But literally sacrificial love, the kind of love that Jesus showed to us. I was recently building a patio. I don't know, how many of you guys know this? Lawn takes maintenance. Yes. I was lied to in the brochure. I assumed it cut itself, weeded itself, and fertilized itself. After a year of having a lawn in my backyard, I turned to my wife and I said, do you know what? And she says, what? I said, pavers don't need to be mowed. In fact, you just have to blow them off. That's it. That's the maintenance that pavers take. And I said, baby, we're ripping this grass out. We're going to put down pavers. I brought in 18 yards of gravel into my backyard, then 12 yards of sand, and then another three yards of finishing sand on top of that. I got it perfectly flat, and then I had 1,250 pavers delivered to my home. And I had one other person set aside to help me. And he looked at me, and he said, no. Nope. He goes, you have nine pallets of pavers here. I ain't doing all of it. He says, is there anyone that you can reach out to that could help us? And I thought, yeah, I have community. And so I called out, and Grady, and Justin, and Casey, and Doug, they showed up at 7 a.m. on a Saturday morning to help me build my pavers. And for the next five hours, we built pavers in weather that felt like the surface of the sun. <laughs> I was blown away at the dedication of this group. And then at the end of that, they said, hey, Josh, didn't you buy a gazebo? I said, well, yeah, it's got about a billion pieces. They all go together some way. The directions are in Swedish. It's going to be very simple. <laughs> and they said, well, bring it out here. Let's build it. And for another eight and a half hours, those guys put together my gazebo. They helped me put together the patio. Why? Because sacrificial love Amen. is what they practice here. Amen. They weren't going to get anything out of it. They're, they're, they might sit on the patio once. They might enjoy the gazebo a couple times. But the reality is, is they did that because they love me. Amen. And as I finished that day and I look back, I was blown away by the dedication of these men. Now, your previous church experience might have been different. Maybe all churches have kind of a different personality. The longer you go to different churches, the more you kind of get to know. Maybe you went to the church where it's all about you. It's like a self-help church. It's just making you a better person. 
Maybe you went to a church that's all about one person. Like maybe it's the pastor. Maybe it's the celebrity that goes there. Maybe it's the worship leader. Maybe it, oh, the whole church seems to be about this one person. Maybe you went to the church that's the cool kids church where as long as you get in the right group, it's okay. As long as you know the right kids, then everything's going to be cool. And maybe that's been your church experience. But here at Ben Christian Fellowship, we do things differently. Amen. We believe... God has called us to an authentic and approachable community centered around love. Amen. And we work that out in a couple of ways. And I want to invite you into this today because there's an opportunity for you to join and become part of a thriving, loving community. The first way that we do that, the first way that we work out approachable, authentic community is growth track. Growth Track is an amazing opportunity that we actually held this morning. We hold it every single month. It's a class that is one hour long that covers who we are, the history of our church, what God has called us to do, and also how you fit into it, what God has called you to do, the purpose He has created you for. And at the end of that, we, we finish out, and then later in the week, we call you because we want to be connected. We want to build a community that knows one another. And we call you and we walk through the things that we've covered in the class. And we ask, are there any questions? And what do you think is a great spot for you? And how can I help get you connected with great people? My goal is to get you connected with great people. And in Growth Track, you don't have to know somebody to get in. There's no secret code. In fact, we're so committed to creating an approachable, uh, a simple way to get in. We made it easy. All you have to do is sign up. That's it. You can have somebody else sign you up. I don't even care if you do it. Sign somebody you know up. Let's get them. Okay? Because they need community. And you need community. The next way that we work out this authentic, approachable community is we have life groups. We have life groups that meet on every topic imaginable. All the way from, I want to know more about the Bible, to I want to remove spiritual growth barriers, I want to become a better parent, a better teacher, a better father, all the way down to, to hey, I want to learn how to kayak better. I'm interested in this board game. Would someone please play it with me? That is 100% a 100% life group. And they're amazing. And the reason that these life groups work is because it's an opportunity for you to meet real people in their home to be pastored and loved and grown and connected to real people. And they can take off the mask and say, I'm not perfect either. But we can grow together. Our life groups meet in three different terms all throughout the year. And I want you to know this term just started. There's an opportunity for you right now. It's not too late. You haven't missed out. You can go on the BCF app right now. Look up the life groups. Call the leader. Say, when do I show up? Where do I go? I want you to be brave. I want you to step out because I know it's going to feel weird, but I can promise you this. There's good food. Okay? There's good food. There's never been bad food at a Ben Christian Fellowship life group. And I got to tell you, if nothing else, go for the food. Okay? That's how I pick the life groups that I go to. I'm like, what kind of snacks y'all having? Let's go. The last way that I want to talk about today that we build an authentic and approachable community is we have volunteer teams. We are a church that runs on volunteers. Amen. We believe this is a family. And when you're at your house as a family, you pitch in. And we expect you to, to get to go, know great people. And one of the best ways to get to know great people is when you come alongside them with a common goal, a common mission. So I want to do this. I've listed out some of the amazing teams here, and when I say one of them, if you've been approached, if you've been impacted, if you've been helped, if you've been served by one of these teams, I want you to start clapping. All right, give me that list. We got the parking team, the security, the managers, the welcome team. There's BCF kids, the nursery team, the pre-K team, elementary, kids church admin, BCF youth. The media team, production, sound, AV right here. The prayer team, the worship team, facilities, grounds, cleaning crew. We got the lawn crew and the events team. There's a hospitality team, a barbecue team, Bend Adventure Sports, foreign mission trips, and the most important, the coffee team, everybody. Come on. That's just to name a few. All of these teams are dedicated 
and they all have one thing in common. They contribute to making Ben Christian Fellowship a place I want to be. Amen. They serve in love, and they're dedicated to serving you. Amen. All of this is possible because of an overflow in our heart, an overflow of joy, joy that we receive from God. All of this, you can't serve if you're at a deficit in your heart. At a deficit in your heart, you don't have a lot of interest in helping other people. But when Christ has filled up your heart and there's an overflow of love, it pours out into the world around you. And that's when real connection is made. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 and 18, Paul says, Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to the alien nation of God living here on earth. He says, I want you to always be joyful. That's a tall order. How do we do that? Here at Bend Christian Fellowship, if you're going to come here for any amount of time, you will hear this verse because at Bend Christian Fellowship, we choose joy. Amen. You see, this verse is not just an encouragement. It's actually a recipe because joy is always accessible to us. Always be joyful. How? By never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances for this is God's will for you. It says, when I look back on everything that God has done, and I look forward to everything that he's going to do, the immediate byproduct of all of that is joy. It automatically happens. Now, you might be in a spot where you're saying, if I look back, I don't see a lot of God. Behind me looks horrible, and the road so far has not been great. But I want you to know you can still look forward. You can trust that God wants good things for you, that God wants happiness and joy for you. I was having a horrible day. I don't know if you've ever had a day like this, uh, one of those days where no matter what I did, it all fell apart. It just absolutely collapsed on me. One day I was driving, I was having a terrible day, and I prayed to God, and I said, Lord, it's just not my day. I, I, I got nothing today. I don't know what's going on. I said, Lord, I need a pick-me-up. If you could send me something that would help build some joy in me today, I would really appreciate it. I was in a traffic line very long. It was already depressing. And in that moment, I looked up. Next to me was a field with two horses in it. Now, I have passed this field a hundred times before and a hundred times since. I've never seen what I saw in this moment. As I looked up and I finished that prayer, two horses had grabbed shovels with their mouths and were sword fighting. You guys, I couldn't make this up. I burst out laughing. I was like, are you kidding me? Lord, I didn't know I needed to see two horses sword fighting, but you sure did. This is the first horse Jedi. They're training. It's coming. Let's go. The horse revolution has begun. I was blown away. God wants joy for you. All you have to do is ask. All you have to do is invite him in. He's looking to give it to you. God wants to interact in your life. He's not a passive God. The God I serve is not far away. He's involved. He's interacting still today through the Holy Spirit. Here at this church, we see healings. We see forgiveness. We see restoration. All of this happens here all the time. And all you have to do is start to look for it, and you'll see it. He's not distant. What's incredible about God's plan for your life is that it's not just community now, it's also a community in the next life. 1 Corinthians 15, 47 and 49, Paul says, the first man was from the earth, a man of dust, but the second man is from heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, which is what we wear now, an earthly body, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. There is a promise for those of us who have accepted Christ's gift of salvation, and that is eternity. Eternity is waiting us. After this life passes, there will be another. And in that next life, we will still have community. God's plan doesn't change. He still wants us to be connected. Theme parks are amazing. My wife and I this week went to Silverwood. I don't know if you've ever been. Silverwood has a theme park and a water park. 
I love theme parks. I go there and I eat the very rich food. There's elephant ears, there's ice cream, corn dogs, soda, and it's always, no matter what time I go there, I cannot figure out how this happens every single time, but it's always a billion degrees. It's the hottest day of the year every single time I seem to show up. And I don't even care. It doesn't diminish it at all. The lines are a mile long and everybody's there and I'm having an amazing time. Here's the thing. To get to the theme park ride, you have to wait for an hour and a half long DMV line just to get for a 30 second ride. And I'm okay with that because I'm eating all the rich foods. But as I'm eating all these rich foods and baking in the hot sun, uh, something natural occurs and I get foofy. Don't judge me. You all get foofy too. I know you do. I just went to a theme park and I was not alone in this. Here's the thing. A lot of times theme park rides, they go up uh, the lines, they go up one way and then they turn and they come back. And I had foofed all the way along that. And in that moment when I turned, I looked back on all the people that I had just crop dusted. And I had to do this walk of shame looking each one in the eye as I passed them, knowing what I had done, and they knew what I had done. There's a caution for those of us who walk in a Christian faith. Be careful how you treat your Christian brethren. You will see them again, and I don't want it to be awkward when we see each other in heaven. So let's treat each other with love. Don't foof on your neighbor. That's the... If you write that down, you can, you can pencil that one in for your, later. <laughs> I want to invite the band up. What do we know? We know that God's plan for your life is not to be isolated and alone. Amen. God didn't create you to be alone. Amen. God created you to be in a loving, thriving, healthy yeah. community. Yeah. God wants to interact with His church He wants to be a part of this. He wants to know you and to be able to impact your life. God wants to be in connection with his alien nation. What are we going to do about that? I I don't know what your past experience was like. Maybe you got burned by church. Maybe your last church really wasn't that great or the community wasn't healthy. Maybe somebody did something that was difficult for you to get over but it's time to come in it's time to come back to community over the last year it was really easy to leave a community it was really easy to be without but it's time time to get connected time to grow and love one another once again and you may be afraid but I promise you God's plan for your life is a healthy community and I want to encourage you to be brave and take the first step I want you to sign up for a life group sign up for growth track sign up to volunteer on a team take that first step and say I'm willing to get back into community with loving people because I know that that's God's plan for my life today and maybe you're at a spot where you're saying you know what I don't think I've ever had community. I've never had people nearby. I've always been on my own. I've always had to do things on my own. I've never felt supported. I've never been encouraged and loved and cared for. Maybe you're saying, I'm on the outside. I've never been a part of God's nation. I'm without. But I don't want to be. It all starts with a relationship with Jesus. All of this healthy, loving, joy-filled community is only accessible to us because of what Christ has done in us. And there's an invitation for you today to join up, to be a part of something amazing and growing and good. And if you're at that spot today, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Now we're going to all say it. I want you to bow your heads. I want you to repeat after me. Jesus, I know I've done wrong before. Thank you for taking my place on the cross. I accept your gift of salvation. I choose to follow you for the rest of my life. 
amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time today, welcome. You've become part of something greater than yourself. You've become part of God's holy nation living as foreigners here on earth. And I want you to take the very next step, which is really, really important. I want you to be super brave, and I want you to tell somebody. Don't hide it away, but I want you to let them know, I prayed that prayer for the very first time today. I've been a part of the nation of God's people since I was seven years old, and I have never once regretted it. I know you won't either. Let's bow our heads. Father, would you continue to grow what's building here? Would you continue to make your community even stronger? Would we impact the world like never before, Father? Would you allow us to reach a generation that is lost? They're looking for community. They're looking for support and encouragement and love. And Father, would you allow us to bring them into that? And to grow in them something amazing. A heart for you. Thank you, Father, for this amazing opportunity. We love you, Jesus. Amen.